Hi guys, thanks for coming around. It's so nice to see your, your shiny faces. Happy on a Monday evening. Um, tonight we are going to talk about, I don't know why that says SQL, should say XML. Um, so XML, JSON, and recursive functions. Um, as per usual, I'll be covering the concepts and showing uh, the, the why we care about these topics. And then Matt will go with you through a colon. So first, XML, you've all seen it somewhere before in your past. If you remember the MySpace era, you had to play a little bit with a, a touch of XML and a touch of HTML, watered down and marked down probably. But um, it stands for Extensible Markup Language. HTML contains how the page is to be displayed, the colors, the shapes, the formats, and then XML stores the data and the content of a page. Um, XML is organized hierarchically, and when, it's, when I say it's organized by tag, it might say like, font is this, character is this, uh, type of monster is this, and then it, it nudges in a little bit every time, and then it comes back out. It uses beginning and end tags, so you know exactly when a specification will finish up. And this can contrast with JSON, JavaScript object notation, it's also hierarchical. It also uses tags, but it's a little bit more neat and tidy. So it's easily read by humans and many, many packages, including Python, can read it. And what, has it, what it has that's a benefit above XML is that it can use arrays very easily. Uh, many people have said it's the new standard. Lots of people don't even talk about XML anymore. Um, these days, the argument is not XML or JSON, but it's do we want to store our data in JSON or CSV? So uh, for a quick example of what XML looks like, um, I have made a tiny little XML example with Matt, me, and our coworker, Victor Geislinger. And look at how much detail is needed to put in just to specify that there are three employees and these are our names. By the way, this PowerPoint is in the repo. So if you've cloned it, you might want to go ahead and grab this code because you'll be using it here shortly. And then uh, let's look at the same thing in JSON. We have our beginning tag. We put our first and last name right there in the braces. Notice that it's organized in, uh, in dictionary-like pairs with commas in between. It's crisp, it's tidy, it's compact. So uh, XML has some quirks. So uh, elements can contain everything, anything and everything between the beginning tag and the end tag. So that can include other elements, attributes, text, a mixture. So this can get really complicated. You can lose track of where your element has begun. You'll keep scrolling and like three pages later, you'll finally get to the end tag. Um, every attribute must be quoted. And you can enter some aspects as an attribute or as an element. So notice here, we have Anna Smith, who is a socialist, and we can either put her socialist party affiliation inside of the element, or we can create a separate element for it. Notice that those two would result in the same data reading. And JSON objects, somewhat less quirky. So it, as long as you include it in a cur curly brace, you should be okay. Um, a lot of times you'll see this where they'll put key value pairs separated by a line so that you can keep track of everything. Um, and then if you don't want to separate them by line, you can definitely see it clear and concisely with a comma in between each key value pair, just like a dictionary. So uh, your key must be a string, but your value can be any valid JSON object. So it can be a null, true, false, an entire array can be inside of a JSON object, uh, numbers, objects, or strings. But so far, when you've been ingesting data, you've mostly gotten a CSV. And uh, what's the benefit of a CSV is that it's super compact. There's small data files. You can send a CSV in a text message if you wanted to. Um, and if you are parsing a CSV, the memory usage on your computer to parse it is steady, is proportional. 
Uh, so this is great if you have a small CSV, but if you have a really large CSV with millions of data values, it's not going to scale well. So uh, then you can pop over to JSON. You can have a you can have a hierarchical system instead of the flat structure. So if like we wouldn't need employee, 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 Anna Smith, Matt Spar, etc. Moving right along, it's hierarchical and uh, scales well. And it also plays really naturally with an HTML environment. And you're all thinking, cool story, bro. We already know about this. So let's do something. Um, Brendan, would you kindly show us on the on your screen in a moment the code you used to create Godzilla and Mothra last week as part of the OOP lesson? Sure. Yes. And uh, so we're going to do fishbowl for the first three minutes. Half of you will be in one group and you will work together to build Mothra as a JSON object in a text editor. This could be notepad or whatever you have. One of you will take charge. And uh, group two is going to build Godzilla as an XML object after group one is done. So when the first group is active, the second group is watching, learning, listening. And then when time is up, group one will share and then we'll swap places. Group two will work together to make Godzilla and group one will sit back, watch, learn, listen. All right, sound good. All right, group one, what are you doing? You don't even know who's in group one yet. Uh, but when your time comes, what is group one gonna do? Build Mothra as a JSON. Object. All right, good. Just making sure everybody's awake over there. Okay. So let's see. I want, Brendan needs to be in group one because he has the notebook. So uh, get ready to roll, Brendan. Uh, so I want Brendan, Bonnie, and Jacob in group one. Steve and Anubhav, you're going to watch. Um, so, Brendan, if you want to go ahead and share your screen. Cool. And uh, all three of you guys speak, uh, be active, you know, don't let Brendan do all the work. All right, so here's our code from last time. So this is our megafauna class. We've got insect. Uh, its height was 750 meters, weighed 2,500 pounds. Here was its battle cry, here was its victory cry, and then its name. All right, so let's go ahead and switch over to text editor. All right. Guess we start with his name, right? Yeah. Mato. Name. Mothra. Uh, his weight. was 2,500 pounds, I believe. How about we just copy and paste everything over here? Just put it in dictionary format. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here, hang on. Bonnie, are you dead? <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading through the, the notebook. <clears throat> All right. Keep cool. doing. So what else are we missing? We're missing, what is that type, I think, was the name? Yeah, what type it is. Is this what you guys were expecting, or were you guys expecting, like, a nested JSON? I am expecting you to do it, however, gets the job done. All right. 
Does it need to be the next row? Like wait. Um, so if you're okay. nesting, it would, but right now uh, it looks like we're putting it all on one line. Mm -hmm. Right now it's parallel. That's fine. Yeah. <clears throat> Type insect. And height 750. Uh, is that the battle cry and the victory cry? Little buzz is the battle cry, and then big buzz is the victory cry. That's it, right? Yeah, you already got the name. <clears throat> what do you think, Matt? Does that look like a JSON object to you? I'd say so. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Cool. All right, um, group two, would you kindly make Godzilla into an XML object. And if you would like, Brendan can be in your group too, but he can't make all the choices. Now that he can share the notebook. All right, you guys want to see the notebook one more time? Sure. Right. I'm not really sure how to do this, but we can try. I believe in you guys. You can also grab the PowerPoint from the repo and use the um, yeah. XML example. So what I did, I just like copied and pasted it. The first number is the the height. I mean the the weight, right? So the first number is height, I think. Second number is weight. Okay. All right, so once you've got that copy down, um, Brendan, give up sharing, and then uh, Steve or Anabob, would you guys like to share your screen and do the text editor? Mm -hmm. Are y'all good? Um, yeah. yeah. Yep, all good. Would you like to share your screen or would you like me to share my screen? I can share my screen. What? Okay, can you see my screen? Oh, okay. Well, I started doing some stuff, but I just like copy and paste it from the PowerPoint, and that's how I was like writing it in. I don't know if this is right at all, and like we have to change, obviously, employees and employees. Yeah, let's tidy up those. But um. Things. Yeah, you could go with monster slash mon monster slash monster. Okay, do we need the like first one? No, right? Because only if we were going to add Godzilla okay. to it. Since it's just Mothra, we can just have one. And for what it's worth, this is how coding happens. You totally just grab what you've seen and use it as a template. So if there's anything else you think I need to change, you can tell me. Because I'm not really sure, like, if this, like, if this was be capitalized or any other, like. It doesn't matter. I mean, if you want it to display nicely when you read in the data, then uh, capitalize. But functionally, that would work. You have a front and end tag for every single aspect. Um, yeah. yeah. Looks looks good to me. Cool. Okay. Does everybody understand how that sausage was made? 
trying to look at y'all's faces, but not everybody has the camera on. All right, cool. And Bonnie, I'm going to assume you're still not dead. No, I'm here. All right, cool. <clears throat> Are you on the metro? I am not, but I'm not in a mood to 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 um, start a video. So, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> gotcha. <clears throat> I'm just giving you shit. All right. <laughs> All right, and then uh, lastly, to set Matt up for success, we're gonna have a quick look at recursion. So um, basically, recursion is any function that has to call upon themselves or parts of themselves to function. Uh, they can be basic, basic stuff. So you can have a function that's n equals n plus one to make sure that you're just adding one as you go along. Technically, a factorial is a recursive function or if you uh, intend to interview for any programming type job in the future, you'll probably see the one about Fibonacci sequence recursion. I've seen it. Matt's seen it. We talked about it and I figured why not throw you guys a softball if you want to snatch this for the future. But uh, this one, uh, it, it makes it look very simple, but you could also puzzle over it for a long time. Uh, I have a question about that function because I did the I did the lab and for the first if statement, I wrote like, if n is less than or equal to one return n, is there any like complications that come with that? Like if the user inputs a negative number, will that, like they're not supposed to, but no. um, would that just do, that would do the same thing, right? It should do the same thing. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so at this point, I've left the, the link in here, but I also have this example. Um, so in this example, I think about my junky cousins, and they make bad life choices, and then they would find themselves needing to pay their phone bill or the house bill or whatever, and then they would need to go around and ask us for money and try to guilt trip us into giving it to them. So um, for this recursion, I like showing things in a non-math example. Uh, so I've set up a little, a little list of my house and my brother's house, my mom's house, et cetera, et cetera. So there we are. And in this, uh, the cousin who shall not be named is going to try to hit people up for money. And one by one, they'll go around. The number of relatives left to hit up for money decrease and the sum of money goes up. So here we're starting off at, there has to be one. Um, and then when we finally exhaust the list, they'll print out something different, then I'm gonna continue asking for money. So now we've made our function, let's run it. So with each run through, it decreases the number of relatives by one. It prints off the most recent relative that's been begged from. And finally, it prints out the sum of money when the begging is done. The phone bill is paid. Hi, Aubrey, are you, are you showing some code on your screen right now? Because I can't, I can't see anything. I, I can just see an example in words, um, but it doesn't show the, OK, there we go. There we go. Sorry. Thanks. Y'all got to say something. Don't let me run through the entire example. I <laughs> that, that explains the furrowed brows. I was like, man, I, I thought you guys were judging me for talking about my because <laughs> it kind of looked like you were you were like pointing out the because your cursor was moving around on the screen anyway. Yeah. So oh, man. yeah, it was the ghost cursor. Yeah. All right. So here it is. Yeah. Um, there are the relatives houses. We decrease by one relative every time it draws back on itself. And we add to the sum of money gained every time it decreases one relative. And cousin who's shall not be named has earned $50 from the family guilt trip. All right. Are y'all ready to do your own recursion and play with JSON and XML? All right. I'm going to hand it off to Matt. All right, so if everyone wants to open the notebook, um, 
called uh, JSON XML recursion lesson. I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. I'll share my screen. All right, can everyone see this? Thumbs up if yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, so JSON, XML, and recursion. Oh my. Um, it might seem like three random topics just to get thrown at you in one lesson. And honestly, it kind of is. Um, you know, JSON and XML kind of go together. And I'll show you how recursion all connects into it. Um, but basically, these are three things that um, you need to at least be familiar with. Definitely, you will be using JSON a lot. You might not use XML and recursion as much, but you'll definitely come across them and need to know what they are. So um, just wanted to put that out there before we start here. So we're going to start with JSON. Um, so to um, import JSON, you have to just do import JSON. And then we're also going to import pandas like that. All right, so then to load the JSON from file, we have to do with open. And um, for this activity, we're going to use um, some data from the Spotify API um, on Old Town Road in particular. So I think the files oldtownroad.json. And we're going to read that. And then we want to do data equals JSON dot, I think it's load and then file. And then we run that and we can print out data. And we can see we get this huge JSON file, lots of different values, kind of confusing to look at. Um, so to break it down a little bit, we can look at the keys of it. Um, but before we do that, we can just check the type of the data object and we can see it's a dictionary. So we know it has keys. So then we can do data.keys and we can see it has these keys here. It kind of breaks it down for us. Meta tracks, bars, beats, tatum, sections, and segments. Um, so now we'll explore track in particular. So we can do data track and we can see this document here. And then we can check its type. So type of data track. It's also a dictionary. So it's a dictionary within a dictionary. And then that means we can check its keys. So if we just copy and paste this here, we can check its keys. And we get all these different things, um, you know, different things about the track, its key, how long it is, how loud it is, its tempo. Um, so what key is the song in? Well, all we have to do is take our data and then the track object. And let's see, in this list, I see key is just key. And if we run that, we get six. And then I just provided a table here to show you what the um, key numbers mean. So for six, it's F sharp, kind of interesting. And then also we can check the duration of the song, um, how long it is and we go back up here the second entry is duration so we just put duration and we can see it's 157 seconds long all right so this is kind of hard to work with and hard to visualize so what you can always do is load it into a pandas data frame so to do that you have to do df equals pd dot data frame and then there's actually a from dictionary method well, let's you pass in a dictionary. So we'll pass in the track dictionary. And then you also have to pass in this argument um, called orient. Um, and you'll see why in a second. And then we can just view it. Um, the orient just kind of puts all the different columns as the index. Um, since we're only looking at one entry here, it kind of makes more sense to look at it this way. But this lets us see all the keys and all the values in an um, easier and straightforward manner. Um, so now we're going to write some JSON, um, similar to, similarly to how you did um, with Godzilla or Mothra. I forget which one was JSON. Um, but we're going to write a JSON string with some different songs, um, including the artist, the title, and the genre of the songs. So we can create our JSON string. We'll denote it by three quotation marks. And then we can do the first curly bracket. And the way I like to do this is kind of do the skeleton first and then fill in the pieces. So we're going to have um, a couple different songs at least. So we need our songs. 
and then that will be a list. And then in each song, we'll have elements like title, and we'll also have artist and genres. And genres will also be a list. And then we're going to have, we'll, we'll do two songs for this. So we can just kind of copy and paste that skeleton there. All right, so then for the first song, we'll just do Old Town Road, Artist. And does somebody want to give me a couple genres of what they think Old Town Road fits into? Um, country and hip hop. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, and then uh, somebody think of another song. Anything. Uh, I had a contribution. Uh, hip -hop, um, not hip hop. Not hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, another song. Uh, we'll just do Bad Guy by Billie Eilish. Because this is another one I'm not sure of what the genres are. So if somebody could kindly tell me what they would classify this as. Hmm. Pop. Um, I have no idea. Alternative. Uh, I don't know the song. Alternative kind of works. We can go with that. Okay, so hopefully that's all set up properly, and then we can just run that. And so then to load the JSON string, um, we can create an object here called songs. Set that equal to JSON.loads, and then pass in the JSON string. And then we can try to view it. And there we go. We have our songs, two different ones. Um, and yeah, that was pretty easy. Um, so now we can save that to file as JSON. So with open, we'll just call it songs.json. We're going to write as file. And then we do json.dump. And we pass in our songs JSON object and then the file. And then we can open that from file. So with open songs.json as read. We can do songs data is what we'll call it, equals json.load um, file. And then we want to load it into a data frame. So we can do songs df equals pd.data frame. And we'll pass in songs data, and we just want these songs. And then we'll want to set the index to something. So in this case, it makes sense to set the title. So we'll do songs df dot set index, and we'll put title. And there we go. All right. So moving on to XML um, to parse XML in Python, uh, there's a library called XML. And then there's a specific object from that you use called element tree. And you get that through this command here. And we'll just import that as ET. So now I have an XML file in the folder. And it's actually um, a playlist XML. So it's a playlist from Spotify and it's just like all the songs on it. and the album and the artist and a couple other pieces of information. So we'll go ahead and parse that now. So first you have to make a tree object and set that equal to the ET. And then we're going to parse and it's called playlist.xml. And then you also need a root object and you just get that directly from the tree object. All right, so now if we just run root, we can just see we get the whole playlist. Um, so to get the element in it, we can do root.getchildren. And this returns all the different track elements. You can see there's quite a few. So now if we want to look a little bit deeper, we can pick out, say, the first track and look at its children. 
So we can do root and get the first one and then do get the children of that. And this shows you the sub elements for each track. So we have the ID, the title, the artist, the album. Um, I think this is like ID number and then added by and added date. So then we, what we can do is for each track, um, we can print out the, um, the text that's contained in the elements um, for each of these. So we'll just take be the first song and do that. So for each node in the first um, element, we'll get all the children. So we'll get all these uh, different elements. And then we want to print the tag and the text value. And that will give us this here, the ID, the title, the artist, so on and so forth. And um, hey, now that, yeah. um, can you explain the node concept here? Yeah, so I just called it node because that's kind of what it is. Um, but uh, the nodes are each of these elements here. Uh, so like the ID, the title, the artist. So you got the column name? Um, yeah, basically. It's like, it's all the sub elements track. It's the same here as like for I in, so, you know. One yeah, two, like I, I could just call oh, this yeah, I oh, instead I and it would be the same thing. Oh, right. Just to kind of make it clear. For dot text, what is the difference between that and dot attributes? Because in the readings, it was saying like dot attributes. Um, let's see here. Okay, so if we get the text, that just gives the ID and I'm actually not getting attributes as a valid command. So I don't know if that's maybe for a different version, but if you do dot text, it should just give you the text value. All right, so then it's a little bit more complicated to convert XML to a data frame. You basically have to kind of parse through um, and add the elements to an array and then um, create a data frame from that array. So the way you do that is you create your data array and then we're going to want to have the column names. So um, we can do a list comprehension here. So we can get the tag for each um, element in just one of the tracks. So we'll just get the first track and then get all of its um, elements. And I'll give us the column name. And then for each child or each, in this case, it would be a track. So for each track in root.getchildren, we'll have that track entry set to an empty array. And then for each node in that child.getchildren, we will append that entry array the text value. And then once we've gone through for each track, we want to append its data to the uh, data array that we created in the beginning. Let's see. Uh, so this needs to be tracked there. All right, and then we can just do df equals pd.dataframe, pass in data, and then set the columns here. And there we go. We have a data frame of all the songs in the playlist. All the columns are set up. And yeah, so now we'll move on to recursion. Um, so to start um, off, yeah, Bonnie? Um, I'm good, I'm good. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so recursion is really difficult to understand. I'm just going to be honest. Like for me, at least, it never clicked immediately. It took many different functions and problems to look at before it finally made sense. It also notoriously is hard to look at a recursive function and know what it does without really thinking it through and following it through a couple different passes. Um, so just keep that in mind as we go forward. I have like three different examples here of recursive functions. I'm just going to show you kind of 
how I would do them and kind of explain how they work and hopefully that um, helps you out going forward. So the first is to check if a given string is a palindrome. So a palindrome, if you reverse the order, it's the same. So like ABA is a palindrome. So to do this in a non-recursive way, what we could do, um, we have a function here is palindrome. It's going to take in a text string. Um, so we want to pre-process the string first just to make sure it doesn't have any spaces um, or capital letters. So we can convert it to lowercase and then we can replace um, any spaces with basically take away all the, uh, all the spaces in the text. Um, okay, so then one way to do this that I thought of is just to create an empty string. And then we basically want to add each letter in the original text to this X string here, but in reverse order. So to do that, um, we can do for letter in, actually let's do for I in range from one. Um, I'll explain in a second why we start with one, but it's gonna be from one to the length of the text plus one. So for I in the range of basically the length of the text, um, we have to append our X string up here with the last element um, in the text string. Um, and so here it's going to be at minus I. So hopefully that makes some sense of why that works. So the first time it goes through, it gets the minus one element, which is the last one. The next time it goes through, it gets minus two, so on and so forth, until it gets the first element. Um, and so then at the end, we have X, which is basically a mirrored version of the text that we passed in. So then all we have to do is check if text is equal to X, return true, it's a palindrome, and else return false, it's not. So now we can um, test this out on a palindrome and non-palindrome. So we'll do text equals, I found this one online, it's a nut for a jar of tuna. It is a palindrome and we'll go ahead and check that out here. Firm it and we got true. So now we can do it again for something that's not a palindrome. So definitely not a palindrome. And I had two quotations. Okay, and that's false. So that one worked. So now how do we do this with recursion? Well, to start off, we want the same pre-processing line here just to get rid of uppercase and to take out spaces. Um, so with recursion, the first thing to think about is you need some kind of exit. Um, you need a way to exit the function. Otherwise, it'll keep recursing on itself over and over. Um, so in this case, the exit could be if the length of the text is less than two, um, then we'll return true. Uh, because if it's just one letter, if it's just A we pass in, well, that's technically a palindrome because it's the same backwards and forwards. And then um, otherwise, if the first element of um, our text is not equal to the last element, Then we return false. And then otherwise, so if it's not just one letter and if the end pieces are, if the first and the last are equal, then we have to um, do recursion and recall this function. Um, so we return is palindrome. And what do we pass in? We pass in the same text string, but from the first element to the second from the last. So we take off the first element and the last element and pass in the smaller um, substring in the middle. And this basically starts off on either end and like keeps closing in. It just checks if the outside elements are equal. And then we can test this out too. I'll just use what we had above here. I got that one right. And it got 
that one right. All right, so moving on, um, we're going to kind of compare the time it takes to run both of these. So for a short string like these, it's not going to take very much time either way. You won't notice the difference. But what if we have a really long string of letters that we have to check? So this code here um, creates a giant string of letters, um, let's see, like over a million, or a million uh, characters long, composed of just the letters A and B. Um, so if you run it here, it might take a second, but it's just this giant long string. Be kind of hard to tell if that's a palindrome or not without looking at it very carefully. Um, so now this function here below just kind of times both of the recur both of the palindrome methods um, and prints out the time it took for each. So without recursion, you can see it took 0.177 seconds. And with recursion, it took somewhat less at 0.0199. Um, so you can see their recursion was actually faster. So um, just to show you, there is actually a more efficient way to do this without recursion. Um, because uh, Python has something kind of built into the way it handles strings um, and arrays. So you can basically do the same um, pre-processing step here. And then all you actually have to return is this here. So text is equal to text. And then this looks kind of funny, but what this does is basically reverse the text string. So it's checking if text is equal to the opposite of it. Um, and now we can kind of time that too using the same giant string and see if we got any improvement. Let's see. Oh, we have to pass in text here. OK. And you can see there it's actually a little bit faster than recursion. Um, so recursion is not always the answer. It looks really flashy and sounds really cool, but it doesn't mean it's always the right way to do things. Um, so now the next uh, problem is to check if a number is prime, both with and without recursion. Um, so we'll start off if it's prime. Actually, I'm going to leave this one um, for you guys maybe to come to, and I'm going to skip ahead to the next one um, where we flatten a list. Because this is where it kind of connects the JSON and XML. Um, so we'll start here by creating a simple list. Um, you can see there's basically three levels. So if we wanted to flatten this and basically turn it into a one dimensional list um, without recursion, we could do it like this. We could just um, basically do three nested for loops. So it's three dimensional. So for I in list, and then for J and I, and then for K and J. Um, and then we'll want to have our flat list up here. And so once we get to every inner element, we just want to add to our flattened list um, that value there, and then return the flattened list. So if we run that, we can see it flattened it pretty easily. But what if we now have a really complex list so this one you can see um, has all different shapes. Um, it's really, uh, you can't really know the structure of it um, just by looking at it. Um, it's kind of random. So do you think if we run that same function on this, it will be able to flatten it, yes or no? Seeing some head shakes, no, some yes. We'll find out. All right, so this is what we got. It did not flatten it. Um, because the original function had three for loops, so it was only going to go down um, three dimensions or three depths. So this is where recursion actually is pretty much needed. Um, when you don't know the structure um, of a list or a dictionary or a JSON object or an XML, XML object. Um, because if you have a JSON object, it could be a dictionary, a dictionary could have a dictionary, that dictionary could have a couple dictionaries and it could go on and on. Um, so that's where recursion comes in. So the way to do this recursively is also to create an initial array um, of the flattened list. And then for each element in the list that we're passing in, if the type of that element is a list, then we need to do recursion on that list. 
So we take our um, array here of the flattened list that we're creating and we add to it a call to our recursive function passing in that sub list. And then if it's not a list, we can just add the element because um, it's just a, a integer single value. And then lastly, we just return the flattened list. We need it in here. All right, so then if we run that on the complex list, we can see it pretty quickly flattened the whole thing out. And there we go. So that's a use case where recursion is necessary and is better than doing it um, without recursion. So now we're going to kind of go into the activity. The activity kind of plays off of all these three different things we just did. So you will use the old town road JSON, the playlist XML to kind of do some exploratory things, um, turning JSON into a data frame, creating a JSON string, stuff like that. Then down here with the horses, um, we have a recursion problem. Um, it's kind of like a word problem, something you might have seen like in middle school, um, and something that you probably don't need recursion to solve, but the challenge is to use recursion to solve it. Um, and there's a hint down here, you might want to import the math library just so you have a way to round down to the nearest whole number. Um, and I'll just go ahead and read the problem here. Um, so you're looking to buy some horses, down the Old Town Road, there's a special deal going on. Um, every time you buy a horse, you get a ticket, and you get a ticket even if the horse was free. And you can then exchange seven tickets for an additional horse free of charge. And you start with $1 million, 15 tickets, and each horse costs um, $1,150. And the goal is to find how many total horses you can get. Bonus points if you check your programming using the solving systems of equations. And no then, about that as I am. And um, then there's also um, a bonus problem here. Probably won't get to it, but it's just something else um, to look into if you want to practice more recursion. It's basically kind of flattening the old town road JSON object using recursion. So just something additional to work on. Um, but so to do this activity, um, what are you guys thinking? We could do like two group if you'd like. We could do individually. It's kind of up to you guys. I'm thinking it would be best if for every section, a different person shared their screen and then everybody else could do Pee Wee's Playhouse and guide the hand of the person sharing the screen. Okay, that sounds good. Are you guys okay with that? Works for me. All right. Um, so I will go ahead and stop sharing. We should also and, stop recording. And I'll stop recording.